Let's continue on this story. I'm joined now by Phyllis Bennis, who is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies, and she joins me now live from Washington, D.C. Phyllis, thank you so much for joining the Al Jazeera News Hour. Let's talk through some of these comments. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying that the intense fighting against Hamas in Rafa is about to end, but that that would then allow Israel to deploy more troops to fight Hezbollah. What do you make of these comments? Thanks, Jessica. Good to be with you. I think that what we're seeing here is a tactical shift, both rhetorically and potentially slightly on the ground, in how and where the Israeli war continues. What we're not seeing is the likelihood of this war ending with an Israeli initiative anytime soon, because Netanyahu's political survival, his get-out-of-jail card, if you will, uh, depends on a war continuing forever. Uh, the continuation of this war is now still underway in northern Gaza. The, the fighting that is going on in Rafah is not the only fighting going on in the rest of, of the Gaza Strip. It's still continuing elsewhere. Uh, this will allow, if they cut back on some of the intensity of the ground war that's being waged with such extraordinary brutality in Rafah, if that gets cut back somewhat, it will allow some of those forces to be transferred north to the Lebanese border, where the war there will accomplish the same thing, essentially, will accomplish Netanyahu's military survival, uh, sorry, his political survival by claiming that only he can fight this war uh, and lead the Israelis in this war. There's internal opposition, as we're seeing, to Netanyahu. But most of that opposition is not actually against the war in Gaza, per se. It's for two reasons. It's against how the war is being waged, to a small degree. And to a larger degree, it's a call mainly with pressure coming from the hostage families uh, to accept a timeline for a permanent ceasefire to allow the release of the hostages. But there isn't real opposition to what Netanyahu claims is that he will go back to war as soon as the hostages are released. There's also not much public opposition to continuing the war and escalating the war on the Lebanese border in the north. So the possibility of war continuing seems to be very much still underway until there is serious, significant pressure from the United States in the form of cutting off the money and the weapons that are enabling this war and this genocide to continue. And Phyllis, you talked about Prime Minister Netanyahu's political survival. What do comments like this mean for President Joe Biden's political survival in the US? Because, of course, there's a different sort of pressure building on him. That's absolutely right, Jessica. The, this may be the first time that there is a serious threat to an electoral campaign because of someone being seen as too supportive of Israel. That's never happened in this country. And what we're seeing now is that the position of the Biden administration and the position of Joe Biden personally, where this is very much a, uh, a personal decision on his part, to maintain support for the Israeli war despite certain levels of, of a language shift, calls for a ceasefire, urging a ceasefire, but all the time continuing to send the arms. That's what enables the war to continue. So the language doesn't have to be taken very seriously. When President Biden says, we wish that there were a ceasefire, Netanyahu can say, we're not going to have a ceasefire. We are going to go back to war. Even if we get some of the hostages released, we will then go back to war again. And it's based on the idea that they know from experience that whatever the language is that's coming from the White House, so far, there has not been enough pressure in this country. There's a huge movement, but it has not yet succeeded in bringing an end to the provision of weapons that make it possible to continue this war. And Phyllis, what and does in that this... context, we... Apologies. What does that mean for this ceasefire proposal? Because it seems as if the Prime Minister is saying not only are we not looking to end the war in Gaza, we're looking to inflict violence in another area. That's absolutely right. And what we're seeing, we saw the, the uh, false claims that Prime Minister Netanyahu made on video the other day, where he claimed that the U.S. is withholding uh, military support in, and made it sound as if this is a major problem facing Israel, when in fact there has been exactly one out of 
hundreds of, of packages that are being sent to Israel of, of weapons, there has been exactly one that has been paused. It has not been canceled even. It's been paused because there was a fear, understandably. This was a package of bombs that included the 2,000-pound bombs, 1,800 of them, and 1,700, 500-pound bombs. These are bombs that can destroy entire buildings. The 2,000-pound bombs can destroy an entire city block, killing everybody there. These are enormous, powerful bombs that even the U.S. claims, although there have been examples where that was not true, the U.S. claims it will not use those bombs in uh, uh, crowded urban areas. Nothing describes the Gaza Strip more than being a crowded urban area. And yet, this is the only time that the Israelis have, have been, for a moment, uh, denied immediate access to those bombs. They've used them before. The U.S. has sent them before, and they've used them before with horrific results in Gaza. But what we're seeing now with this U.S. claim and with the visit now of Defense Minister Gallant to Washington uh, just this weekend, they're trying to rebuild uh, this tension, this the relationship, get rid of the tension that's going on with the Biden administration. But there is no indication from the Biden White House that they are prepared to stop sending the weapons. And if there is a significant shift where there's a greater emphasis on Israel's war in, uh, in, against Lebanon, against Hezbollah in Lebanon, and a lesser emphasis on the continuing war in Gaza, it will make it even more likely that all requests from Israel will be granted by the U.S. because the war against Lebanon will be seen as a more traditional war against a somewhat more traditional, more powerful enemy, uh, where the, the number of missiles that are accessible to, uh, to, to Hezbollah are certainly greater than any kind of, of military capacity held in Gaza. So it's going to make things even worse, I'm, I'm afraid, in terms of the uh, refusal of the Biden White House to stop sending the weapons, the only thing that is going to actually bring an end to this war. There's not even yet an acknowledgment uh, either actively or even verbally from the Israelis to recognize what Hezbollah has said very clearly, that the, a ceasefire, a permanent ceasefire in Gaza would be the most important thing to tamp down the tensions on the Israeli Lebanese border. Phyllis, so much there to unpack. I'm sure we will speak again soon. That's Phyllis Benes, who is a fellow at the Institute for Policy Studies. Phyllis, thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica.